It began with an unexpected glow. As SpaceX's Starship streaked through Earth's atmosphere, a strange orange blaze appeared on its heat shield. Unlike the familiar crimson plasma that surrounds spacecraft during re-entry, this was a rust-colored flare that spread across the ship's stainless steel body. For a brief moment, viewers questioned whether they were watching history unfold or disaster take shape. Almost instantly, speculation erupted online. Was this a catastrophic failure of the thermal protection system? A tile breaking loose? A chemical leak from within the rocket itself? Theories multiplied, but few had answers. The explanation, when it finally came, was startling. Elon Musk confirmed that the orange glow was not a malfunction at all. It was rust, the rapid oxidation of experimental metallic tiles installed on Starship for the first time. What looked like a potential breakdown was actually a deliberate test. The spacecraft had been carrying a secret experiment all along, hidden in plain sight. That revelation reframed everything. What millions of viewers had interpreted as a dangerous anomaly was in fact a glimpse of SpaceX's bold attempt to revolutionize spacecraft heat shielding. To understand why this mattered, it is necessary to revisit the flight itself. Flight 10 was already historic in its own right. For the first time, Starship managed a smooth ocean splashdown, proving that its second-generation design was more than theoretical. Engineers had orchestrated a sequence of near-impossible maneuvers with surgical precision. Inside mission control, commands were transmitted through Starship's RF system with barely a few hundred milliseconds of delay. The ship's onboard guidance integrated inputs from GPS, altimeters, and inertial sensors, then reignited its powerful Raptor engines at precisely the right moment. The fuel system, working in tandem with high-pressure COPVs, balanced flows in real time. All of this unfolded autonomously, without a human hand guiding it in. The smooth descent and splashdown were a triumph of engineering yet almost nobody spoke of the landing itself. All attention focused on the orange scars staining Starship's surface. Musk's confirmation shifted the conversation. SpaceX had installed a handful of metallic tiles alongside the standard ceramic ones. These tiles, unlike their ceramic counterparts, were designed to endure multiple re-entries without the fragile brittleness that has long plagued spacecraft protection systems. But the test produced an unmistakable side effect. When a spacecraft plummets through the upper atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, conditions are unlike anything experienced on Earth. Around 110 kilometers above ground, ultraviolet radiation splits oxygen molecules into highly reactive atomic oxygen. For metals, particularly iron or steel alloys, this environment is devastating. Oxidation of At Mach 25, the tiles began to shed iron particles almost instantly. The surrounding plasma stream carried those particles outward, leaving behind streaks of rust-colored residue that clung to nearby ceramic tiles. Starship's heat shield, normally blackened by re-entry, was instead streaked orange. And yet, the ship survived. To SpaceX, this was not a failure, but a valuable set of data points. For decades, the fragility of ceramic heat shields has haunted spacecraft design. The Space Shuttle, for instance, required exhaustive inspections after each flight. Even minor tile damage could have catastrophic consequences. Metal, in theory, offers an alternative, it bends instead of shattering. It endures instead of flaking. For Musk's vision of rapid turnaround rockets, metallic shielding could be the key. But Flight 10 raised as many questions as it answered. Would metallic tiles always leave behind orange streaks of oxidation? Could that layer be scrubbed away quickly? Or would it slow the 24-hour reuse goal SpaceX envisions? 
Would scaling the system to thousands of tiles cover Starship in rust after every mission? And perhaps most critically, would the underlying hull suffer microscopic damage after repeated cycles of oxidation and cleaning? While these questions remain unresolved, another anomaly appeared during the same flight. The nose cone of Starship turned white. Unlike the metallic oxidation, this too was deliberate. SpaceX had intentionally removed ceramic tiles in certain areas to test the insulation beneath. Made of composites and heat-resistant fibers, the insulation withstood direct re-entry heat. Instead of oxidizing, it reflected thermal loads and spread into a pale white layer across the nose. Two experiments, conducted simultaneously, yielded two dramatically different outcomes. A surface painted orange with iron oxide, and another, ghostly white with melted insulation. Both, however, held. Both survived. This dual test underscored SpaceX's approach. Experiment boldly, accept imperfections, and extract lessons from every flight. Still, the results raised difficult engineering challenges. Three metallic test tiles had left streaks across a large portion of the vehicle. If the same effect were scaled to thousands of tiles, the ship might emerge from re-entry blanketed in rust. SpaceX appears undeterred. Musk has hinted at exploring exotic superalloys such as Inconel 718 or Hastelloy X, materials capable of withstanding extreme temperatures while forming stable, protective oxide layers. Unlike conventional steel, these alloys do not corrode destructively. Instead, they develop thin films that actually shield the underlying material from further damage. In theory, a Starship cost, scalability, and the sheer difficulty of producing enough material to cover a rocket of Starship size. And then there is the issue of cooling. The metallic tiles are not intended to function passively. Their design envisions an active system where liquid coolant, water, fuel, or another fluid bleeds through microscopic pores to protect the surface. Known as transpiration or film cooling, the method has existed as a concept for decades, but has never been implemented at this scale. Aerospace researchers in Germany once experimented with a porous ceramic material known as Proxylite 170. Pumping water through it, they demonstrated the ability to cool a 1,750 degree Celsius surface down to just 25 degrees in controlled tests. While promising, the application to stainless steel on a spacecraft the size of Starship is far more complex. Initial estimates suggest that cooling Starship's surface under maximum re-entry loads might require pumping more than 50 kilograms of coolant per second. Over a five-minute re-entry, that amounts to 15 tons of liquid. For a rocket designed to carry over 100 tons of payload, Devoting such mass to coolant would represent a significant trade-off. This raises a critical question. Is the vision of an actively cooled metallic heat shield truly feasible? Or will the costs, in payload capacity, manufacturing, and complexity, ultimately outweigh the benefits? Flight 10 provided no definitive answers, only clues. The orange glow and the white nose cone were not accidents, but signals. Proof that SpaceX is probing the boundaries of what spacecraft heat shielding can be. Whether metallic tiles will replace ceramics, complement them, or be abandoned altogether remains uncertain. What is certain is SpaceX's willingness to risk, to test, and to reveal failures publicly in the pursuit of breakthroughs. Each streak of orange across Starship's body is not just oxidation. It is evidence of a company methodically pushing into uncharted territory. And so the investigation continues. Can metallic shielding withstand repeated re-entries without costly maintenance? Can active cooling systems operate at scale without compromising payload capacity? Will alloys advanced enough to resist oxidation ever become practical for a rocket of this magnitude? 
The answers remain elusive, but one thing is clear. Flight 10 was not merely a demonstration of Starship's landing capability. It was a coded message, written in rust and flame, hinting at a future where spacecraft may no longer hide behind fragile ceramics, but instead wear armor of metal, cooled by liquid and hardened against the fury of Earth's atmosphere. The mystery of Starship's heat shield did not end with Elon Musk's explanation. In many ways, it had only just begun. What Flight 10 revealed was not simply that it revealed the potential and the peril of an entirely different approach to spacecraft protection. To grasp the scale of what SpaceX attempted, one must look back at the history of thermal protection systems and the compromises they forced upon earlier generations of rockets. NASA's Space Shuttle is perhaps the most famous example. Its black and white ceramic tiles were iconic, but they were also its greatest weakness. Fragile, easily chipped, and painstakingly maintained, they required teams of engineers to inspect and replace them after every flight. A single damaged tile proved fatal in 2003, when Columbia disintegrated upon re-entry. The shuttle program never recovered from the shadow of that disaster. SpaceX is determined to avoid repeating that history. But truly reusable spacecraft cannot spend months in repair between missions. If Starship is to launch daily, the vision Musk often describes, its heat shield must endure multiple re-entries with little more than light maintenance. Metal offers that possibility, but as Flight 10 proved, it comes at a cost. When the metallic test tiles burned orange, they highlighted the unavoidable chemistry of re-entry, oxidation. Steel, in particular, is highly vulnerable when exposed to atomic oxygen at hypersonic speeds. The rust-colored streaks were not catastrophic, but they raised important concerns. Could repeated oxidation weaken tiles over time, making them brittle or warped? Could corrosion spread microscopically beneath the surface, unseen until it became dangerous? SpaceX has not yet published the full data, but engineers studying the flight are asking precisely these questions. For metallic tiles to work, oxidation must either be slowed dramatically or made harmless through design. This is where superalloys enter the conversation. Alloys such as Inconel 718 and Hastalloy X are engineered specifically for high temperature environments. Instead of corroding destructively, they form thin oxide layers that act as self-protective skins. Jet engines, for instance, rely on these materials to withstand scorching exhaust gases without crumbling. If such alloys were applied to Starship's heat shield, they might allow metallic tiles to resist the furious atomic oxygen bombardment during re-entry. The challenge is scale. Covering a rocket as large as Starship in exotic alloys would be a massive manufacturing effort, potentially driving up costs and introducing new engineering risks. Superalloys are heavy, and weight is the eternal enemy of spacecraft design. Every additional kilogram devoted to shielding is one less kilogram available for payload. Still, the possibility cannot be dismissed. For interplanetary missions, where rapid turnaround on distant worlds may be even more critical than on Earth, a metallic shield with active cooling could make the difference between success and failure. And that leads to the second, and perhaps greater challenge, the coolant problem. The very concept of SpaceX's metallic tiles relies on transpiration cooling, pumping liquid through microscopic pores to form a protective barrier against heat. The idea is elegant. In theory, the coolant absorbs heat and evaporates, carrying energy away from the surface. In practice, the numbers are daunting. Researchers at Germany's Aerospace Center, DLR, once tested porous ceramics under extreme heat flux. With a steady water supply, they cooled surfaces from over 1,700 degrees Celsius to near room temperature. But those experiments involved small test areas under controlled conditions. Scaled to the size of Starship, the calculations become staggering. To cool even half the vehicle's surface during peak re-entry loads might require more than 50 kilograms of water per second. Over a five-minute descent, the total could reach 15 metric tons. 
15 tons of coolant is not just an engineering challenge, it is a logistical one. Every ton carried as coolant reduces payload to orbit. Every kilogram spent cooling is a kilogram not delivered to Mars or the Moon. For a spacecraft meant to deliver 100 tons of cargo, this trade-off is unacceptable. The solution may lie in precision rather than scale. Heat during re-entry is not distributed evenly. Certain regions, such as the nose cone and leading edges, absorb the majority of thermal stress. If active cooling were concentrated only in these hotspots, while less critical areas relied on conventional ceramics or passive insulation, the coolant demands might fall dramatically. NASA faced a similar problem decades ago. The shuttle's most vulnerable regions, such as the wing leading edges, were fitted with reinforced carbon-carbon tiles far stronger than the rest. SpaceX may adopt a hybrid approach. Metallic active cooling tiles where heat is fiercest, ceramics where it is not. Such a system would reduce the burden of coolant while still providing robust protection. But even then, questions remain. How would coolant be stored, pumped, and distributed during the chaos of re-entry? Could pumps survive the vibration, acceleration, and extreme temperatures? Would leakage create new risks, spraying propellant or water into plasma streams? Musk himself once described the system as a stainless steel sandwich with liquid flowing between layers and bleeding outward. The simplicity of the description belies the enormous complexity of making such a design practical. Beyond engineering, there is also the matter of philosophy. SpaceX is chasing reusability with a relentlessness no other space agency has attempted. To most organizations, the orange streaks on Starship would signal failure. To SpaceX, they are a clue evidence that something worked, if only partially, and worth refining further. If this deep dive into Starship's heat shield sparked your curiosity, don't let the story end here. Hit like to let the algorithm know this is worth uncovering. Share it with anyone who obsesses over the future of spaceflight. And most importantly, subscribe and turn on notifications because the next chapter in this investigation could break at any moment, and you won't want to miss it.